We've got the wrong way to practice scales. First, the right way. Guitar shifts. At this point in the video, a lot of YouTubers might say thank you for taking the time to stop by their channel. With that being said, I just want to say, you're welcome for creating this channel and providing you with top tier content. In this video, we'll be covering the wrong way versus the right way to play scales. This video was inspired by a clip I saw on Instagram of one of my favorite guitarists. Me! 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 This clip received over half a million views on Instagram, so I figured it might be worth it to explain what I was doing in more detail. There also seemed to be a lot of people getting offended in the comment section. Hmm, why am I not surprised? I swear to God I could post a picture of a dog on Instagram and people would get offended. You're all a bunch of pussy bitches. Now fuck up that like button for me. You're gonna wanna watch this entire video too, because if you actually implement what I'm gonna be showing you, you're gonna increase your musical confidence by at least 900. If you don't watch to the end, I'll be canceling being offended. Most people practice scales in what we'll refer to as the traditional or linear way. This is the way that most of us are taught. And when I said that this way was wrong, that's when people really started to get pissed off. Now, I understand their point of view. Let's say I've been playing guitar for five or six years, and this is how I learned scales. I would be annoyed because I would think, who the fuck is that guy? Tell me what I'm doing is wrong. Because it's technically not wrong until a certain point. If you're learning a new scale shape, you should practice it this linear way until you have it memorized. And when I say memorized, I mean you should be able to play it in any key. Once you reach that level, continuing to practice this way becomes ineffective. ineffective. So now you're actually wasting your time playing something you already know when you could be using your time to practice something that you don't know. Hence, it's the wrong way to practice scales. But I still think it's pretty dumb to be bothered by an Instagram reel that only lasts 15 seconds. You can't provide a lot of context in such a short time. I think smart people know that, but people that are stupid don't think about these things. There's no reason to cry and bitch anymore because now I'm gonna show you how to practice scales beyond this point. So you can go from an average player to an average player that knows a few different ways to practice scales, but still doesn't because you're a lazy piece of shit. The order in which I'll present these practice methods will go from easiest to hardest. We'll be using G as our reference key since I know it's the key that every guitar player loves. And by that, I mean the only key that you're borderline comfortable with. Round one, practicing the scales with chords underneath. If you have a loop pedal, you can record some chords from a given key and then you can record yourself playing the scale over those chords to see what kind of sounds you produce. Some would even argue that this way of practicing is fun. No fun in my house! What would make this even more fun is if you had a friend to play those chords for you. That would be great fun in theory, but it sure would be bold of me to assume that you had friends. Watch this example now! So why do we practice like this? What a stupid question! So you can familiarize yourself with how each note of the scale sounds over each chord. And this way of practicing is arguably more fun. Although I can't say that for certain because this is a feeling I've never experienced. Round two. I learned about this next fucking way of practicing from Joe Satriani. All you have to do is go up and down the scale, but between every note, play the root. Check it out.
So why don't we practice this way? When you ascend and descend a scale in a linear way, sometimes you're only doing that from muscle memory. It's a little bit easier to play things sequentially, but when you break it up like this, your true knowledge is revealed. Science, round three. Okay, I know that some of you pussies in the audience are probably still recovering from that last round. Sucks to be you, because now we're gonna take things up a notch. Another way to practice scales is in intervals, like thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, etc. See example now. What you're thinking. Brandon, why the fuck should we practice these? The main benefit from this exercise is that you're forced to recognize the relationship between notes in a scale. For example, when you're practicing in thirds, you're going to figure out which note in a scale has a minor third and which note has a major third by default. The second reason, of course, is finger dexterity. But pretty much all these exercises are good for that, damn it. Don't subscribe to my channel. Round four. This next exercise is deceptively hard. It seems easy, but go ahead and try it and you'll realize how much of a bitch you really are. All you have to do is play a scale and say the names of the scale out aloud as you play it. Like this. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, a, G. It's not so hard in a key like G because there's only one accidental. Let's slide everything up a fret and try again. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, B flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, B flat, F, G, A flat, G, F, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, A flat, G, F, B flat, D flat, C, B flat, A flat. If your soul isn't crushed yet, let's try a harder key like B for Brandon. B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, E, D sharp, C sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, E, D sharp, C sharp, B. This exercise really helps you memorize the fretboard, which is why I introduced it so early in my guitar program, 52 Week Guitar Player. Click the link in the description to book a call with myself or another pro from my team to learn more. Round five. We've lived, we've laughed, we've loved, you've cried, and you still haven't subscribed. But this next section is really gonna separate the men from the boys. This is the kind of stuff that your father shows you and says, look here, son, you see this man? He's a really great guitar player. And if you practice really hard for a really long time, you'll still never be like him. And you're on cigarettes to think otherwise. What am I talking about here? Chord scales. Yes, scales aren't just limited to one note. You can play chords too. I'm gonna show you four clips in the first clip, I'm playing triads. In the second clip, I'm playing first inversion seventh chords. In the second clip, I'm playing second inversion seventh chords. And in the fourth clip, I'm playing seventh inversion seventh chords. Aha! Just kidding! In the last clip, I'm playing third inversion seventh chords. As if you'd know the difference. Also, I'm not always gonna be starting on a G chord. The reason for this is just how the chords lay out on the fretboard. If I started with a G every time, I could run out of fretboard in some cases. Roll the clip!
By the way, we're gonna hit one mil subs here on the channel by September of 2022. Guitar Chefs, Jake Paul has 20 million subs. Yes, it really do be like that. So do your part and don't subscribe now. We can hear some pretty interesting sounds. And the beauty of this is that they're all coming from the key of G. Probably not the chords you think of when someone says key of G. I break down all this stuff in 52 week guitar player. This content is in the more advanced modules in the program. But why do we do this? Stuff like this is great for getting familiar with more chord voicings within a key. Helps your chord vocabulary. These chords also stretch your fingers. Round six. What if I told you, you could sweep a scale? Well, as a matter of fact, you can. Roll the clip. What I did just now is go through the C major scale by sweeping through its seventh chords. But I prefer second inversion sweeps because they're easier and I can play them faster, which makes them more enjoyable, but still not fun. I like to mix up the rhythms too. Check it out. I've now shown you second inversion and root position three string sweeps. I don't like first inversion three string sweeps because I find they're harder to play. I guess I'm just a bitch, aren't I? Wait a minute. Who the fuck is that guy? Round seven. The hardest way to practice scales is now upon us. But first, a word from our sponsor. Plot twist, I am the sponsor. And I wanna to talk to you about 52 Week Guitar Player. Basically the program can be broken down into three components. The first component is the curriculum, which is a 57 module curriculum. Starts out at a super early level of playing and it gets super advanced as you progress through to the end. The idea is that as you go through each module, there's a practice routine so you don't have to figure out what to practice yourself. I've already mapped that out for you. And when it comes to the amount of time that you spend per module, it ranges from person to person. In a perfect world, it might take you a week, but I find that's not often the case as it depends on a few different things like the person's skill level, their schedule, the difficulty of the module, etc. The second component is our Facebook group. The reason that this exists is so you can share progress videos and get feedback on your playing. Feedback is guaranteed. And on top of that, we have two live streams that happen in the group every week on Zoom. There's usually about five to 10 people that attend each one. Tuesdays are with me and on Saturdays, they're with another instructor. You can come to these live streams, ask whatever you want, or even get your playing roasted if you're brave enough. The third component of the program is called the weekly video challenge. Basically, this is a commitment to sharing a progress video in the group every week for 52 weeks. The catch is, if you fail to post in a given week, then I'm gonna call you out in the group and I'm gonna tell everyone that you bitched out. This, of course, is an optional challenge. You don't have to commit to it if you don't want. Some people have a career and a family, so I get it but it's still in place to give you some extra accountability if you want it. The idea is that as long as you're continuing to post, you're gonna continue to get feedback and you're gonna continue to improve, which is the main reason that anyone would commit to a program like this in the first place. If that sounds like something that you wanna be a part of, then click the link below and book a call with either myself or another pro from my team. The call is free, but the program is super expensive. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna to explain to you that initial exercise that I showed you at the start of the video. The reason that I saved it to the end is because, yes, it's the hardest. Check it out first here in the key of G and then I'll talk about it more. <laughs> Why is this exercise so hard? It doesn't look that bad. Well, we're covering the entire fretboard. That's why it's hard. We're playing diatonic triads up and down a key until we literally max out the neck. Technically speaking, it's not the most difficult exercise. That would probably go to the sweeps. But I still have to rank this higher because the amount of time it took me to be able to do this in any key was longer than any other exercise before this. The key of G is easy because it resolves nicely on the fretboard. But if we go to the key of D, our lowest triad without playing any open strings is still G, but G is the four chord of D. So the way it lays out on the fretboard is totally different, which makes sense because obviously it's an entirely different key. Check it out.
conclusion. There's a lot of information in this video. Enough that the creation process of this video really pissed me off. But I'm not even mad. If playing scales in the traditional way has become too easy for you, then you are practicing scales wrong. wrong. You're no longer challenging yourself and you're gonna hit a plateau if you haven't already. So I encourage you to take all this information and work on one section at a time and get through it in all keys before moving on. Even though I know deep down in my heart after you're done watching this video, you're just gonna fuck off and go do something to waste your time. Watching YouTube videos does not equal practice, kids. Even if they're guitar related and you have a shockingly good looking instructor like myself. Use the videos to get information and then apply it. Or just sign up to 52 Week Guitar Player if you want to make things easy. We're on a mission to hit 1 million subs here on the channel by September of 2022. If Jake Paul can have over 20 million, then we can have over 1 million, damn it. This video is now over. Now just leave, okay? I don't want you here. <laughs>